I've had a lot of questions on my bubbler and can you show it to me and that type of thing. And it, it's just hard because normally the hood's on here and it's a pain to take off. But now that the season's over, I'm cleaning up the hood's off. Um, I get the pressure washer out and I've gotten most everything done. <laughs> I already did the pan cleaner and let the bubbler run overnight with warm pan cleaner and water in the pans. And then I pressure wash real quick, quick just to get the scum off. And this is how it looks already inside the pan. And that's without any scrubbing at all. That's just the pressure washer real quick. Um, it definitely does need to be scrubbed. Um, I got it filled up with water now and then I'm going to put some soap in there and get it really scrubbed up good. But I'm going to warm that soap up when I do it. Connor at Leader built my bubbler. You can see he started with the layout of the pipes coming in to supply the air to the manifolds. Then he took and was able to weld on the different pipes that drop into the bottom of the flues. Those all have air holes in the very bottom of them where it lays on the bottom, and, but it's a three-piece design inside the flue pan. They drop in and when you see it in there, it actually looks awesome. They go in a little dry, but they work great. And that blower motor is out back. And that's just because of noise. To, and it's got a box built on it with a filter, so it filters out the air. And then it's a pipe that comes in. So it's Schedule 40 PVC coming in through the wall. It drops down through a stainless valve. And that valve is on there because if I shut down at night, I need to close that. Otherwise, the warm pans will condensate out and go back into the bubbler blower. So I just close that at night. The other thing it does, it allows me to close it when I pull the bubbler out into the season. So disconnect on the back so I can take all that apart if I want. It comes in and there's a pipe that comes through the back of the pan. Valve, this piece comes out and then it drops down into the manifold. And it's two sections. One section drops down and goes forward. One section drops down and goes back. And there's where the air injection happens or like the magic, I guess. Um, so I'll flip it on so you guys can see what happens when this thing gets going. And then I'll turn it up too because there's a variable speed rheostat that allows me to control how much is coming in. So that's just on low right now. Then if I turn it up, it really gets going. So what we're doing here is we're really keeping everything that's in the bottom that would lay on the pans and it's keeping it so that it's moving the whole time. So that it stays suspended, it doesn't lay on the bottom of the pan and create that cake. And the nitrogen can build up on that. And it keeps everything flowing as it should. The other thing it does is it lightens up the syrup. Max pans are known for making dark syrup. I was able to make golden this year and last year with, with it. So I take it out at the end of the season though because I want to make sure that I'm making the color that matches the flavor. That's the most important thing. For cleaning, what I'll do is I drain the pan and I've got a draw off tank I put the whole flue pan into. Then I can take, flood the pan with permeate, put some pan cleaner in here, and then let it roll with just the bubbler overnight. The residual heat that's in the evaporator arch will warm that permeate and cleaner up and it'll make it to where in the morning this thing will almost be clean and then I just drain it out. I run the pan cleaner through a filter to catch the chunks of niter, and then I'm able to save it and reuse it. So I use the same uh, pan cleaner all season that I had started with. And it doesn't take a lot of work. You can add bubblers to your syrup pan. Um, I've heard of people making Bud Light also known as buddy flavored syrup with a light color um, because of the bubbler in the syrup pan. Um, I don't think I need it. I mean, it would help keep the sand moving, that type of stuff, but I'm looking to have the flavor match the color. And I've been able to do that with just doing it in the flue pan. Generally, I've got steam coming off the flue pan with the bubbler on probably four minutes before it even starts to think about coming off the syrup pan. And that's got a lot less liquid in it. 
because we're breaking up that surface area and getting things moving so much faster with the bubbler. Out of the, all the improvements I've done to the evaporator, the bubbler is one that I should have done first, before the hoods, before the preheater, because it makes it easy to clean and it makes it to where I clean more often. So we're also making lighter syrup that matches the flavor. So that's a, a really big piece too. Whereas the preheater just gained efficiency, a, you know, a, a little bit, but not like the hoods didn't do really much either. One thing that we did notice is that the temperature coming in out of the preheater with the bubbler on was a lot lower than with the bubbler out of it. Generally, we were going into the flue pan at about 100, 120 degrees with the bubbler on and with it off, we'd been as high as 180, 190, sometimes even 200. So our efficiency went up a lot more because we had that much more liquid going through that it didn't have the time to preheat it as much in that uh, preheater. The bubbler for the two foot by four foot max flue pan was about 3,500 bucks with the blower. Now the plumbing you've got to do yourself um, with the schedule 40 and the wiring, but about 3,500 bucks will get you into a bubbler. Well worth it. If anyone's looking to add a bubbler to their H2O liter evaporator rigs, reach out. Um, I'm a dealer for liter H2O. I can get you set up. Um, if, to put the liter style in, you do have to bring your flue pan to Swanton though. They make it, it's custom to match your flues. The H2O one is a drop-in unit. I'm not as familiar with that one because I don't have it, but they're well worth it. And like I said, I can help you guys get set up if you want to put a bubbler in your Leader H2O flue pans. Um, my email is in the description down below and my phone number is not hard to find. So yeah. with that, um, like I said, one of the best investments I've made is the bubbler for my flue pan.